What is gas collection over water? We've got a reaction vessel here with a bung in to prevent gas escaping from the top. So it's going through the delivery tube and into this inverted measuring cylinder. And because the gas produced is less dense than water, you can see it bubbling above up to the top and the gas is pushing the water down as it collects in the measuring cylinder. Now you can see the gas is above the water, so it's collection over water, and it's also pushing the water out, so it's known as displacement of water. The first thing to think about is the choice of the reaction vessel. One possibility is this sidearm boiling tube. We've got a fuse glass joint here and the delivery tube comes straight out of the side and there's a bung in the top. Another option is to use a conical flask with a bung fitted with a bored hole through the centre through which the delivery tube comes out. Secondly, how will we secure the reaction vessel? There's two options here. We can either find a clamp and clamp our vessel like so, or another useful alternative is just to place it in a boiling tube rack like so. The choice of the collection vessel. And this depends on what you want to use the gas for. If you're interested in collecting the gas to use it, then if you don't have very much gas, you can use a test tube, or if you've got a larger volume of gas, you can use a gas jar, like so. However, if you want to measure the volume of gas, either the final volume produced, or you want to look at the volume of gas increasing over time in a, in a reaction, uh, then you're going to want something with graduations on. Most popular choice would probably be something like this measuring cylinder. Um, alternatively, if you want higher resolution, You can use a burette. Once you've decided on your reaction vessel and your collection vessel, we need to position the collection vessel. So I'm going to use one of these measuring cylinders and you need a tub of water. About half full, this is just tap water and this is where you're going to put your measuring cylinder in. I can, if I'm using something like a test tube, I can actually fill up my test tube directly from the water in the tub just by tilting it upwards slightly and then I've actually got no air bubbles whatsoever. This tub's actually too small uh, to fill up the measuring cylinder that way. So I fill up the measuring cylinder from the tap. I filled it here right to the brim. But actually as I look here I can see that actually my graduations don't start until slightly above the base. Now in order to get an accurate reading of exactly what volume I start with in the measuring cylinder, I'm going to just pour some away, just a little bit. Now for the tricky part. I'm going to place my hand on top of the measuring cylinder and then I'm going to invert it, making sure I keep good pressure on the measuring cylinder. I'm then going to put my hand under the water with the measuring cylinder and only remove my hand once I've got everything under water. So now the measuring cylinder is in the water, we need to clamp it in place. We can use a clamp for this purpose. And we're going to just lift our measuring cylinder up ever so slightly to make sure that we can fit the delivery tube underneath. So once you're happy that it's in place, you can just clamp it. Check that it's vertical, that looks fine. Also check that you can read the scale. We can see the gas level is on the scale here and we can see, we can read the scale. That will depend on where you're standing to do the experiment. Once you've done that, you can bring your reaction vessel. I've got the sidearm boiling tube here um, and we just need to place the delivery tube snugly underneath. It doesn't need to go right up the tube. It just needs to go in so that the gas is definitely going to go in there and we're ready to collect our gas.